This paddle got tore up. Can you tell it's all bent up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I do my thing. I'm Angel Verde. We're in Northeast Tennessee, and this is AWOL. Oh. <laughs> oh, won't you come get lost with me? As a lifelong adventurer, I've learned that exploring the outdoors isn't about escaping reality, it's about discovering it. Join me as I show you new experiences in amazing places. So let's get outside, embrace the local state of mind, and find your next adventure. This episode of AWOL was brought to you in part by the Northeast Tennessee Tourism Association. Northeast Tennessee, there's more. The Tennessee Department of Tourist Development, the soundtrack of America made in Tennessee. And All Trails, your guide to the outdoors. How's it going, everybody? Good. All right. Uh, so I've never told a story in front of a crowd, but I figured since I'm here in the storytelling capital of the world, I'd give it a go. This will be more, more of a poem. This is about the place you call home. These mountains, they're hiding secrets, but everyone is privy to all the magic awaiting you in Northeast Tennessee. With hundreds of miles of trails and rivers, you might find it hard to pull yourself away from endless outdoor adventures. But the cities, towns, and counties here are brimming with Southern charm and culture distinctly their own, making them just as special as the nature that surrounds them. Bordering North Carolina and Virginia, Northeast Tennessee is easy to reach within a few hours of many major East Coast locations. Not to waste any time, I think the river is a great place to start my journey. I'm alongside the Nola Chucky River just outside of Irwin, Tennessee, here at USA Raft. They have all kinds of stuff that you can do here from one wheels, hiking, tiny houses, and of course, everything that you can imagine to do in the river. It's basically like a summer camp for adults. So bring the kids or don't bring the kids. Either way, I'm gonna meet up with my friend, Matt Moses. I've been a river guide for, for 30 years now. While there, there's a lot of great rivers to raft in the Southeast, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina and Tennessee, some great rivers to raft. This one's really unique in a lot of ways. The beauty, the sense of remoteness yeah. that you get in there. It's, it's, it's literally awe-inspiring. And so to be able to provide that experience to you know, the casual rafting guest, I'm proud that we do that. And to get people to stop doing this for just a little while and maybe look up, look around, maybe communicate with a family member, nothing makes me happier. People that have, have experienced things, you know, whether it's the Grand Canyon or hike the Appalachian Trail, everybody is, is pretty wowed by the experience that the Nola Chucky Gorge has to offer. I am ready to go rafting. It is a little brisk. So we're, we're putting on some cold water gear. This dry suit was designed uh, to uh, look like 80s dance music videos. It has nice broad shoulders. So it has a matching hat. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> there are a lot of ways to experience the Nolichucky River, but to take full advantage of this epic riverside base camp, you should take the plunge and face the mighty Nolichucky's whitewater. Kayakers and stand-up paddleboarders charge at these world-class rapids, but you can do as we did and just let the pros take care of things and jump in a raft, or as I like to call them, giggle factories. Seriously, try not to laugh and smile when you're riding in a raft. USA Raft places you in easy access of nearly 11 miles of river. Seasoned paddlers come for the class three and four rapids upstream in the gorge, while the lower Nolichucky stretch of milder class two and three rapids that still help you fill your thrill bucket. This trash that you find on the riverside, but the folks at USA Raft, you know, they really put a lot of effort to make sure that they're picking stuff up even when they're going on commercial trips with customers. You know, just when floods come down, the river rises and picks things off off the riverbank that normally wouldn't get in the water and it gets tangled up in trees. But even just a little bit of trash helps. You know, it's just one way to keep giving back and protecting the rivers here. So much fun. Aaron, how was that? That was awesome. <laughs> that was so fun. Water sports aren't the only source of adventure at USA Raft, so I went over the river and through the woods to the aptly named Survival Island to get hands-on survival training from the highly experienced instructors at the Nolichucky Outdoor Learning Institute. I knew at least I was in good hands with lead instructors, Scott and Jeremy. While on the island, I learned the priorities of how to survive in the wilderness. To my surprise, food was last on the list. I learned to use a compass, landmarks, and other surprisingly simple rules to find my way back to civilization if ever needed. I also got a lesson in shelter building where my group of fellow castaways helped build an all natural, organic tiny house. A very, very tiny house. While there are so many more skills you can learn here while with the Noli team that we didn't have time to show, my survival lesson ended with some basics in fire building. This is my bounty of sticks. I may make art out of it, but I also may just burn it. Or I'll make art that catches on fire. Too shabby. Oh, we need some coffee. We do need Did some coffee. Did you not bring the coffee? No. Does anybody bring beer? No. no. <laughs> we do need a beer. <laughs> oh, well. To me, hiking is the most approachable gateway activity to the outdoors. And Northeast Tennessee has no shortage of hiking for all levels. I'm going to try my hand at several trails because why not? To help me get started, I'm meeting with my new friend, Jonna, for a short hike. Jonna. Hey. Hey. Angel. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for meeting up with me. Yeah, no problem. I guess we're going to hike to Marguerite Falls. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's figure out where we're at before we go. Okay. Where are we? We're here. Okay. And <laughs> well, we're going there. Well, okay. That's it. All right, ready to go? Yeah. Let's do it. Do you hike very often? Yeah, I hike as much as I can. But yeah, that's one good thing about the area is a lot of people hike. Yeah, this is cool. Very organic. like a water slide. There she is. Woo. Oh man, it's like a cool breeze coming off. Yeah, feels good. 
Oh, that's so cool. Oh, such a nice hike. Yeah, the falls are totally worth it. Totally worth it. Thanks for showing me. Yeah. Well, I have more hikes to get to. All right, right on. Have fun. We'll see ya. See ya. You could wear out a lot of hiking shoes just exploring all the trails in Northeast Tennessee. Easy hikes for beginners all the way to your hardcore backcountry treks are here for you to conquer. on Roan Mountain near Carver's Gap. Roan Mountain is a series of five peaks and actually straddles along the North Carolina and Tennessee border. The AT runs along the ridgeline here on Road Mountain, so you have to imagine it's one hell of a reward when you get up here and you see these 360 degree panoramic views on these grassy bulbs. It's absolutely beautiful up here, but I have more hikes to get to. I'm getting to my hikes. More hikes! Want to hike to some waterfalls? You can do that. Hike to over a mile high up? Yup, you can do that here also. How about just a walk in the park? No, seriously, the parks here have great trails. How about section hiking on the Appalachian Trail? You betcha. It's all here for you to explore. About 20 miles east of Johnson City in the Cherokee National Forest, a hidden mountain oasis awaits. So we're at Watauga Lake and we're gonna go sailing on this boat. Bob's our captain for the day. Should be a good time. We have a couple other boats coming out here too. It's gonna be a whole regatta. Man, it's pretty this morning. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now to find some wind. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> gonna be an interesting challenge. You ready to hoist some sails? I'm ready. Hoist the sails and fly the birdie. Let them know who we are. Oh, perfect. Is that all the way? That's all the way. And now wrap it around. Nice, right there, that's good. The uh, challenge with a mountain lake is because you've got these mountains, you'll get a wind shift about every 10 minutes. Oh, really? So as a, as a skipper, you have to adjust to those wind shifts. It's a, it's a really challenging place to sail, but it's such a delight. I see a little wind over there. We're going to go to it. But I have a secret way to get to the wind. <laughs> go, winds. Take it over. You can do it. You can do it. Go! What makes, what makes sailing on this lake special? There are so many things. A lot of uh, ocean sailing or large lake sailing takes you 30, 40 minutes to get out and sailing. You're, you know, you have to go through up a river or something or up a, a bay. And uh, this lake, you're, you're right there. You're, you know, as you saw, we, we were sailing in five minutes. The other thing is that you can <laughs> sail almost all year long. You know, it's just so amazing. This lake is so clean. Well, I'll bring kids out 
put the ladder down. Yeah. And it will swim off the boat. Oh wow. Just picnic out here. Yeah. And it's really nice. Is that just from us driving or is that the wind trying to decide to do something? It's uh we may get a little shift here. This is nice. That's the breeze. Yeah. Oh sweet. Sweet. Alright. We have wind. Okay. Yes. Now I'm smiling. <laughs> Man, this was fun. Yeah, it was. Thanks for bringing me out here. My pleasure. This was really good. Ah, love this lake. Just got down to downtown Johnson City. What's really cool is everything is accessible by foot once you get down here. Restaurants, you have bars, different shops, but most of all, you can go on hikes and you can ride your bike all from downtown. I'm actually gonna go pick up a bike because we're gonna go ride the new Tannery Knob Mountain Bike Park. So I'm here at the, the Trek Bicycle Store. I used to own a sweet mountain bike. I sold it for one reason or the other. So finding a bike I can rent is key to getting my single track fix every now and then. Here in Johnson City, the Trek Bike Shop is that rental shop with a fleet of bikes ready for those interested in trying things out or for those out of towners like me who are just looking to get out on the trail for a couple hours. So we have the ride here. <laughs> We're right here at Hub C. <clears throat> so we got the baby blue flip, baby blue flow trail here that drops down and climb back up. You got blacks, which is really cool out here at Hub C. You can go down the blue, come back all the way in the green back to the um, trailhead, or drop down on this black, which then brings you up here to the panorama and brings you all the way back up to the trailhead. So a lot of different options. Um, about four miles of trail, a lot of different circles and loops that you can do and be as creative as you want to be. Sweet. The cool thing about the green is you can bring, um, you know, people bring their kids out here and they roll through it. Um, Six-year-olds have a blast, um, but also somebody like you that can come out and just rail through it has a blast on it as well. It's almost like a big, like a kilometer long pump track. So nice. A lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. We'll start going to ride that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> This is amazing. You literally have world-class mountain bike trails right here in downtown Johnson City. Beginner, intermediate, all the way to advanced. Anybody can come up here and ride and have a good time. 
And when you're done, you finish your day, you have these views to enjoy. It's absolutely perfect. You couldn't ask for a better asset to have right in your town. When in doubt, if you're from out of town, always stop by the local bike shop. Locals are always down to ride, no matter where you're from. That was fun. I need a drink. Whew. Mountain biking. In Washington County, you'll find the town of Jonesboro, the oldest town in the state and the storytelling capital of the world. I met with storyteller in residence, Sheila K. Adams, to learn what makes this slice of Americana so special. My family, were, they were all storytellers. They would get together at family reunions, decoration day, when they would decorate the graves. Okay. And they would tell family stories, and so that's what I started out doing was family stories. I was the first storyteller that they had here as a storyteller in residence. So I've watched it change throughout the years, and it's been a really good change. Too. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you, so you've seen the town grow around it too? Oh yeah, when I first came over here in 1997, there wasn't anything here. In Jonesboro, they have made a really big deal out of people's stories, mm -hmm. all kinds of stories. And it's friendly to people of all different kinds and natures. What makes storytelling in Jonesboro special? Like what makes that being here special? The storytelling festival in itself has been a big phenomenon around here. And it's one of the best places that I've seen that you can go and just be yourself. Yeah. And people love that. And they come from all over the place to watch you be yourself. I'm after you. Okay. Welcome to Tennessee Hills Distillery. I'm Steve Callahan, uh, owner and distiller. My wife and I uh, produce everything right here in house. Here at Tennessee Hills, we, we like to say that we make products that are a little more authentic, a little more unique, uh, things that take a little bit of craftsmanship in what we do. My name is Stephen Earl Callahan, and guess who's on the label? <laughs> S.C. Callahan, right? Uh, now, this is a high rye bourbon, so it's got a little spice to it. For a younger bourbon, I feel like it's uh, pretty complex. Uh, big, big one, that's in, there. in my hand. <laughs> I can tell that's good. <laughs> We're good. Hold it together, man. been over there in Western North Carolina since 1731. So all these songs that were kept in my family were kept by women, and they usually poked fun at men. There was an old farmer who lived by the sea, and a merry old farmer was he, was he. Well, he had a fair maiden who laid on the grass, and every time she turned over, she'd show her fair ruffles and tuffles, <laughs> slick as a duck. She taught that old farmer a new way to bring up the children and teach them to knit. While the servants in the barnyard was shoveling out contents of the barnyard, slick as glass. If you don't like my story, you can go kiss my daughter in the parlor who winds up the clock with a piece of red ribbon tied all round her poodle dog, her poodle dog, poodle dog galore. If you don't like my story, I'll tell it no more. Hey. That was it. Thank you. After an evening of drinking and learning the craft of telling stories and tall tales, I head to the South Holston River to make my own fish tale of one that hopefully doesn't get away. Hey there, are you Cy? I'm Cy, yep. Hi, I'm Angel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, it's raining, so I guess we can't go fishing. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never been fly fishing before. Well, I get a lot of people in the boat that haven't fly fished before, and I really enjoy having people that haven't fished ever yeah. get in the boat, experience something new, and I learn something new every time. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. What kind of fish are we trying to catch? So we'll be catching rainbow and brown trout today. Okay. Probably the first half of the river, they uh, stock rainbows. And uh, about halfway through the river, it switches over to 
primarily brown trout that we'll be catching. So cool. um, it's really cool. And all, all the browns we catch today are wild, which is um, really special about this place. Um, with how healthy the river system is, they're able to reproduce naturally every year. So it's awesome. So. Yeah. Step in? Yep. Right. And that chair spins around for you there. Farewell, friends. We are off to fish the mighty South Holston River. We'll come back with bounty of trout. Or maybe nothing. Or maybe stories that are all lies because we didn't catch a damn thing. <laughs> what I usually do when I come up here is people that haven't fished before, it's a good spot to teach to cast. And we're not wanting to fish very far from the boat. Okay. Um, the closer we can get, the easier it is to manage your line. But what I'm doing here, it's called a roll cast. So we're drawing a, a big D loop and then stopping that rod tip hard so the line gets goes out. That's perfect. Now upstream men. Alright. Alright. So when you go to recast, you can strip in a little bit of that line. Oh, so that's a fish there. Oh, I already got one! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fish! Come up. <laughs> Keep them coming towards me. There we go. Hey! <laughs> there we go. We got one. Some pretty fish. Yeah, he is. Bye, guy. Back you go. Well, dang. All right. Let's do it again. <laughs> The South Holston River offers stellar trout fishing in its cold, deep water while carrying you through breathtaking Tennessee countryside. Unlike dry fly fishing where anglers lure fish to the surface with floating artificial flies, we spend our day using a heavy weighted drop shot setup and nymph flies that sink down into the water where I can <laughs> only assume all the lazy trout prefer to wait for dinner to come to them. To finish my trip, I've made my way to a city that straddles two states deeply rooted in American music, art, history, and culture. Here in the city of Bristol, it is as Tennessee as it comes. Oh, we're filming a TV show. <laughs> nice. You guys do this often? Out from time to time. I got done with my radio show on Radio Bristol, and we thought we'd come out here and pick some tunes. Cool. We're looking for a place to drink. I mean, place to drink. I think Elderberry is pretty good. Elderberry. Okay. okay. Local brewery. Local brewery. Sweet. You want to check it out? Are y'all heading that way too? I guess well, so. I guess we can. Why don't y'all come join us? You might okay. as well. Let's go. <laughs> yes, yes. Come back and tell me He says no
written into songs for generation, you've probably been singing her name for years, slowly being called to her hills and the place you call home. It's the birthplace of country music, David Crockett, and home to mountain moonshine. It's inspired stories of adventure and creates new ones each day, all here in the place you call home. When you get to explore the dirt from the land and the water from the rivers get into your blood, it forever connects you to Northeast Tennessee. Whether you're born here or just passing through, it will always be the place you call home. It will always be the place we can call home. Oh, won't you come get lost with me? This episode was made possible in part by our friends at All Trails, your guide to the outdoors. Yeah.